Hello and welcome to Monet Cafe. Subscribers, newcomers, friends, I'm artist Susan Jenkins and I hope you enjoyed this lesson on color temperature, unlocking some of its mysteries. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, I hope you will and let's get started. Color temperature seems to be a bit of an enigma for some beginning artist. That's why I love to break things down and I think this chart that's a free clickable link in the description of this video will help you to understand along with this tutorial. In part one of this series we learned about value and how it is so important as a beginning to any painting. Now we're going to apply the next principle which has to do with color temperature and how it behaves in a landscape. Often temperatures cool off in the distance or they're warmer in the foregrounds and when we learn the rules of nature we can exaggerate things and not be so bound by our reference images. So join me in this lesson where I will not only teach you how to correctly identify color temperature but also describe how it behaves in a landscape painting. Now in understanding color temperature we need to have some sort of a gauge to determine what represents a warm color and what represents a cool color. And I love my handy dandy pocket color wheel. I love you little color wheel. And you guys know that I talk about this color wheel a lot in my videos. And it's probably the most common system for artists for mixing colors and determining color relationships. And while I love this color wheel, I actually lean towards a different kind of color wheel system that I'd like to talk to you about right here. To complement my teaching on color temperature, I'm referencing a website from ECG Productions. I will put the link to this in the description of this video. It is quite fascinating. I mean, just look at this title here. Everything you know about color is probably wrong, but I don't want to go down that rabbit trail. I'm just using this website to reinforce how I lean when it comes to color theory and the color wheel. Most pocket color wheels, the ones that I use all the time, are based on the subtractive color system and the primary colors are yellow, blue, and red. That's probably what everybody learns and in this scenario the opposite color from yellow is violet on this color wheel. But for the purposes of this video in teaching about warm versus cool color, I'm going to base it more on the additive color wheel, which is a little bit more based on light. And I feel it's more accurate actually, but I also feel it's more powerful and understandable in describing color temperature. So for the purposes of this video, I will use yellow as the warmest color and blue as the coolest color. And don't let that confuse you, it's just a better gauge for me as to what defines warm versus cool for this example. And if this kind of thing fascinates you, I have a video here on Monet Cafe called The Truth About Color. It's a six or seven minute video and it really is fascinating. Now with that information in mind, let's go ahead and use this pocket color wheel, but I wanted to let you know why I'm not going directly across on this one. I believe the warmest color at is to be yellow and the coolest color is blue. It's somewhere in here. So I'm not quite opposite, but it would be on the other color wheel system. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and look at different color temperatures with actually adding some pastels to this. I didn't have the purest yellow. Once again, I'm out of town doing, oh, I've got another yellow over here that's pretty, pretty good. Let's grab this one. Yeah, that's pretty close. So we've got a yellow, which we're going to, for these purposes, use as the warmest color. And again, I don't want to get in a fight with artists. I know this is something that people have different opinions on, but I have found this is the best way um, for me to understand color temperature and a lot of people have really said that it really helps them too. So this is our yellow. This actually has a little bit of green in it. I don't know if you guys can see that here, but let's pretend that's the truest yellow that we have. Now let's find what we would consider a true blue. And you know I always say color is relative. A blue can actually um, look more turquoise depending on the background you put it on, but we're just gonna try to do the best we can here. This is kind of close to a true blue, maybe like an ultramarine blue um, if you had a paint. And um, so let's, for these purposes, consider these are the opposites on the color wheel. 
All right. So warmest color, coolest color. I'm just going to work in this side right now. So with this in mind, if you are starting from yellow and you move in this direction, are we moving towards something being warmer or cooler? We're going in the direction towards cool blue. So these colors are getting cooler with respect to yellow, with yellow as the starting point, moving this direction. Now, if we start from blue, the coolest side, and we move this way, we are getting warmer. So I want you to keep this in mind that when we talk about a color temperature, it's kind of with respect to what we're relating it to. Are we relating it to yellow? Or are we relating it to blue? So let's do this example to find out. I'm gonna grab a color right here. This is probably close. It's um, not quite the same as this one. It has a little bit more yellow and a little, a little bit more green in it. But let's put this color right here in the middle of our color wheel train we got going. So if we're relating this to blue, is this getting warmer or cooler? Well, it's going in the direction of yellow. So with blue as the color we're relating it to, this is a warmer, you could say this is a warm blue, okay? It's moving in the direction of warmth. But if we are starting at yellow, if we're relating it to warmth, it is actually a cool green. You see that? We're kind of in between green and, uh, and blue right here, okay? You see right here? This color is kind of in between these two. So this can actually be called a warm blue, but it could also be called a cool green. You see, it's here's green. Let's get a, a color that's a little bit more of a true green. And when I say true, there are no true anything. It's all um, in relation to other colors that it's next to. Let's see if I can find a decent green. This isn't perfect, but that's this is a, has a little bit of a tint or uh, in it. It's a little bit of white in that one. So now can we see how this color is cooler, okay? So if we're relating it to green now, this is a cool green going towards the cool side. But if we're relating it to blue, okay? Let's put another uh, blue in here. That's not quite, it's, let's get something a little bit more teal there. All right, let me grab this one here. Can you see now that this one, it's a little dirty on the opposite side, has a little bit more blue in it. It's a little cooler, than this one, right? And now let's add a yellowy green. This one's probably, yeah, that's a little more yellowy green. So keep in mind that when you describe a color temperature, it's kind of based on what you are starting with. Okay, so let's try the same thing with reds. Okay, let's go down here. Once again, I know my color wheel is not exactly lined up like the one that I lean towards but we can still use this as an example. All right, I'm gonna get a nice kind of purpley color here. It's dirty, all these are so dirty. Let's get a nice, um, I don't have any dark magentas. Oh yeah, I think I do. See, this one leans more towards magenta that I say on the, this is close to a magenta color right here. This one's more of a red violet. Oh, I love the color magenta. And now let's get, everybody always has these challenges with what is a true red. To me, reds um, just, it's so hard to find the one that you would consider a true red, but let's, uh, let's get this one right here. And now let's move a little bit of a warmer. What direction are we going in now? If we're moving from this side of the color wheel around, well, let me move this up a little bit. We're moving warmer, getting towards the yellow. So let's get a warmer red right here, okay? This is gonna add yellow to it, okay? So this has more yellow, it's a warm red. Now we can even get even warmer and it's moving more towards orange, it has more yellow in it. Uh, again, I apologize for these dirty pastels. <laughs> and then we can get more kind of a yellow orange. Let's see if I've got something close. Yeah, that's probably close. Now, let me see if I can find a blue violet. I happen to really love this color that's in between purple and blue. I was actually trying to write a song with that. I thought that was just such a nice uh, line for a song in between purple and blue, <laughs> but it's one of my favorite colors. See, this is more purple. It's really hard to find that color sometimes represented well. 
And I don't even think I have one like that. I thought I'd come back to this website here uh, to talk a little bit more about color mood in talking about purple. Uh, and it did say that violet purple is a very unusual color. It's my favorite color. Often used to represent fantasy, creativity, wisdom, or spiritualism. This mysterious color is the color of royalty. And also in the Bible, it was the royal color of kings. So this is really interesting. Once again, you might want to check out this website. I will have the link in the description of the video. All right, back to the color wheel. So um, we're going to leave blue-violet as a mystery color. <laughs> but let's talk now about a color being a warm red or a cool red. And once again, it all kind of depends on where you're starting from. I would say, let me see if I can get another red that's a better representation of... Hmm, it's hard. It's so hard to find that red that you think is like maybe this one. Okay, let's look at this one here. Okay, so let's say... I'm going to move these all over a little bit, that this is a true red. We can see that from this red, the one right next to it is a warmer red. Okay, now if we move in this direction towards the blue, we're getting cooler. So let me see if I can find a cooler red. I know a lot of people have a hard time with this, and I'm not even sure if you can see these subtle dif di differences, um, but... If you could notice this red right here, it doesn't have quite as much yellow in it as this one does. Let me see if I can turn this over. It's dirty on every side. <laughs> or as this one does. You can definitely see it's getting more yellow in it. So a cool red is going to be a red that has less yellow in it. Um, here's another representation of a cool red. Now, I'm, this one has a tint to it. It's adding some white, but it's more like a pink. This is a cooler type of red, all right? Pink is a cool red, all right? So, and an orange is a warm red, a very warm red. So, I hope this little directional concept of warm versus cool can help you. I know it really helped me when I sort of discovered this as I was analyzing the color wheel. I thought, wow, that really makes sense if you consider the direction that you're going in. So let's keep that in mind as we go to the easel and talk about color temperature and the physics of how we work these things into a landscape painting. And by the way, I wanted to mention that I also recommend, if you want to learn a little bit more about color theory, color temperature yourself, I love using an appetizer tray, not only for understanding uh, warm versus cool colors, but also if you don't have many pastels and you're just getting started, it makes for a great little pastel palette. So that's just a neat little trick I discovered a few years ago. And remember, you can find this free graphic available as a clickable link in the description of this video, which will complement the lesson. All right, so we have our value example, and now let's talk about color temperature. Before I even get started, I'm going to let you know that it is a similar concept with warmer to cooler as it is with the value scale or example that I've given. So let me go ahead and mark that down. Now I've done a similar example as the value example, and we're going to keep in mind the horizon line, and we have the two dynamics happening from the earth to the horizon line and from the sky to the horizon line. Now, just as we spoke about in the value example, the same thing applies with the color temperature example in that we have to understand how the laws of physics work with regard to color temperature on our earth. And typically color temperature is warmer to cooler toward the horizon line. Okay, we're talking about the earth. Okay, below the horizon line, warmer color temperature to cooler as it recedes in the distance. Now with the sky, we're talking about things from the heavens down to the horizon line. Now what normally happens way up in the heavens? You're getting further away from the earth and if you notice in the sky, the colors are cooler. You know how you get to space and it looks bluer and then eventually it turns black and your color temperature is typically warmer towards the horizon line. Now that doesn't mean you're gonna use a yellow necessarily, but I'll talk a little bit more about 
uh, cool blues and warm blues, okay, as we do the example. So keep the horizon line in mind for both of these and the way that color and value behaves with respect to how our earth works. And I think that's gonna make you a stronger painter and also able to paint more on your own rather than just copy another artist. All right, now back to color temperature. With respect to the color wheel, and again, this color wheel, just like the value scale, is on my Amazon store. You can find it on Dick Blick. And I'm always saying the Amazon store I have is more for your convenience to find the things. I have them all categorized into painting tools, studio, studio tools, uh, pastel painting things, and uh, papers, even my favorite books. So um, that is on here too. It's so handy because it has so much information on the back of the color wheel. I highly recommend this for the beginner. These, I think I even have it on there where you can buy both of them um, combined at a pretty good price. These are cheap, great, the handy tool. All right, so with respect to color temperature, let's, let's put yellow um, uh, this way, all right? So things are going to get warmer with respect to the earth. What did we say? Warmer to cooler towards the distance. Now, why does this happen? It's similar to what I think I mentioned before about like mountains in the distance. We notice that they get lighter in value. Okay, they're not as dark, they're far away. Well, they get cooler in color temperature because the same principle, there's a lot of air between us and the distant mountains and things blue out, they gray out, they get more neutral, uh, sometimes even purple. Have you noticed purple mountains? And we can choose, once we learn these things, I often have people asking, how do you get so creative with color? It's really just these simple principles. If you know them, you can exaggerate them a little bit. Okay, so what's gonna happen on the earth is we're typically gonna get our warmer colors. Let's take grass, for example. Okay, we've got a lot of grass in this picture here. The grass in the foreground is going to be warmer, okay? And as it recedes into my color wheel, I gotta be able to flip it over. As it recedes into the distance, it's going to gradually get a little bit, it's gonna get lighter in value too. So we can go down here. It's going to get more like here. That's the neat thing about this. You can take green and give it a tint, which means um, lighten it up a bit. Okay, see how you did that there? And this is add, it says adding white, okay? This is adding, um, adding black, you get a darker shade. Adding white, you get a lighter shade. Adding uh, blue, you can blue it out, cool it out like that. So um, adding yellow, you can make this green warmer. So that's how awesome this color wheel is in applying these principles. And don't think you're gonna have to always break out this color wheel to know these things. They just become second nature. I think what happens a lot of times with artists is we've been doing some of these little things so long we forget that we didn't know them. And so it's uh, it's my goal to break it down simply so you can know it and you get it and then you're not even thinking about it anymore. All right, so once again, warmer to cooler, it's gradually getting lighter in value and it's getting a little bit more neutral. Now we're not talking about neutral in this example. I could have done a third one on how colors get more neutral, less punchy. They don't have as much chroma in them, but that's another, actually I have two lessons on um, neutrals and how they work. So let's go ahead and give some examples here. But before that, let me talk about the sky. Let's go ahead and get this one covered. The sky typically, this one kind of goes darker to lighter meeting at the horizon line. This goes warmer to cooler, and then because the sun's back here, it goes warmer to cooler up in the heavens. So this one isn't quite as opposite as this one. So let's go ahead and give some examples here. If you could um, even make some of these little charts for yourselves. As a matter of fact, that's a great thing that I'm gonna ask my patrons to do. If you are not a patron of mine, go ahead and do it on your own, but I love giving my patrons homework and they put it in the homework album. If you don't know what a patron is, it's uh, where you can support this channel for $5 a month. It really does help. But my patrons get extra content. We get communication. We have all these different platforms. A lot of great people in there. All right, so let's put some color to the test and do this. I know that this field is green primarily, okay? So sometimes our brains will look at a photograph and we'll go green, all this is green. 
And this in the photograph is blue. And, and actually, this is a good representation of how mountains behave in the distance. Actually, this photograph is not lying in that case, like some photographs do. So, um, but what we can do is we can use our artistic license and the rules of how things really work in nature, warmer to cooler, and we can make kind of more creative and colorful paintings. All right, let's take a look at my color wheel. Before we put the color down, I can't turn it totally straight up and down. But once again, yellow is gonna be our warmest color. And if we want some warm greens, I have them a little closer to the yellow, okay? So these are warmer and they're gradually getting cooler until we even get to some turquoisey colors and eventually get to the coolest blue. So what are we gonna do? Let's grab some of these. We, I'm gonna add in a little bit of this lesson over here with the value. We're gonna add a warmer green and a little darker in value. In other words, I'm not. this is a warmer green, but I'm not gonna use that one here because it's, it's a little bit too light, okay? So let's use a warmer green um, that's darker, and then we're gonna gradually lighten it up and get cooler as we go into the distance. So keep this in mind as I'm picking out colors, I'll try to show you. All right, so I have a, this would be a warmer, maybe a little bit more neutral green, but a warmer green that's also a little darker in value. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of that down. I'm gonna kinda, this is just um, paper, okay? So you see the pastels falling off of it? That's why we uh, typically like to have a sanded surface or at least a surface that has a little more grit than that. All right, so we've got a warmer, darker green there. Now I'm gonna go a little bit we know color gets a little lighter in value. It's still a warm green, but I'm gonna go a little bit, it's still kind of a dark color, um, a little bit. You can tell it's warm, it's got a lot of yellow in it. A little lighter in value, okay? All right, now we're going to get even lighter in value. You've got a little bit of bright sunlight happening here. It's still warm, but pretty soon, I'm gonna gradually have to start cooling this baby off. I don't think it's quite that. I'm exaggerating it a little bit, okay? So, all right, so we got the sun hitting on this, even a little bit of sun here. We know the sun in this example. How would you tell where the sun's coming from? A easy way in this example. The shadows, you can see the shadow is behind here. Once again, I'm just dealing with color temperature in this one. All right, you see my stuff is just falling down everywhere here. All right, now gradually, as we get back to this next level here, once again, it's a little darker back there, but we know it's going to cool off a bit, okay? So I'm gonna put down as a base, this might sound strange right now, um, this little purple. Like I said, it's um, this is a little bit more of a neutral, colors get a little more neutral, but they're cooling off a little. I am gonna add some green on it, like it's a distant hill, but I'm cooling it off underneath with a little bit of that, that neutral purple. And um, now I'm going to get an even lighter, kind of a neutral green, and um, it is um, a little more subdued in color. And that kind of gives you the idea of these mountains back here. Now I'm even gonna cool it off a little bit more. These are just some examples. I don't know what pastels you guys have or don't have. Um, I could even exaggerate that even more by um, exaggerating the fact that color temperature does what in the distance? It gets cooler. So let's take a look at this. That would be a really um, cool green or a warm blue. Once again. So we're just gonna kinda give that idea that these trees are, are it's, a, it's like a mountainside in the distance, are kinda cooling off a little bit because they're far away. Now we've got these really distant mountains, so what's gonna happen to those? They're gonna cool off even more. So let's just go ahead and make them a blue, okay? And I'm just gonna grab this blue. It's got a little warmth to it, a little bit of yellow, but it's definitely cooler than everything else. So let's make these mountains a little bit cool. They're kinda coming in back here like that. I'm gonna lighten them up in value. Remember with pastels, we can go a little darker before we, and it's usually a good idea to do that because it adds a little depth to what you're painting. So let's get that down. And now I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit with, um, this is a little lighter. It's still considered a cool color and it's a little bit of a lavender color. So see how that, it's also neutralizing it a little bit. 
All right, so we lighten that distant mountain up back there. And now we've got like another mountain a little bit further away than that. And let's make that one even um, a lighter, beautiful kind of a lighter blue. Let me see if I can find one of those here. Yeah, it could even have been a purple. Okay, you see these mountains back here? I'm not even looking at my reference photo. I tell you guys that all the time. Look at your reference photo. And I'm not doing it. Okay, so we got another band of some kind of mountains back in here that's even lighter. Um, now, let me go ahead and add a little bit more of this. Uh, now, I'm adding a little bit of this. Sometimes you can add a little bit of, uh, see how we've got some grasses in the foreground? And then we could add even, it gives that illusion because of the value that this is closer. Now, let's go ahead and get this dark tree in here just so, um, just because it is dark. I'm going to put in, let's see what this color is. And I often just use the side of my pastel um, to get the shape in rather than um, getting too fussy with things. You can just get a general shape and uh, usually it looks more painterly that way. I like the gesture of this tree, how it's kind of going up that mountain. I need to finish my mountain up here or my hill. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get some more of that. Uh, that green. Now I know it's uh, this is still considered foreground, really, because it's kind of close. That's a little high, isn't it? A high hill. <laughs> All right, let's get. Um, I'm going to get a little bit of. Uh, this is a darker. This one never works good on newsprint, but it's a little bit darker and cooler because we're getting to like the shadow side. I need a different purple that'll work better. Yeah, see how that goes on better? Sometimes different brands of pastels just behave differently with layering. All right, so there we have our darkest thing in the scene. And then we can add up maybe a little bit of these greens, kind of layer it in, kind of wherever the light would be shining. See that? Real easy. Look how easy that tree was. All right, now that's super basic, but let's go ahead and talk about the sky after I clean my hands. Okay, now we're going to talk about the sky. And typically, once again, these are all generalities. You can analyze your photo and determine if you need to change things up a bit. But these general rules are really, really, I hope, really, really going to help you. All right, so let's talk again about the rule of the sky. What does it do with respect to color temperature? Higher in the heavens, see our little diagram? Cooler to warmer. And that's all relative with within the cool color family, okay? We're not going to go the sky blue to yellow unless we've got a glorious sunset down there or something. But usually it gets a little warmer down to the horizon line. All right, so I've got a blue that's, I'd say that's kind of in the cool family, and it's also with value. What is it with the sky? It's a tad darker in the heavens and gradually gets lighter in value. So, so I would say for a sky color, this is a darker value. You don't want to get too dark, okay? Depending on the scene, I mean, you might have a, I just did a night scene with a moon in one of my videos and, um, and we can layer these, okay? So you can come down, you don't want a line, uh, cool and darker, gradually getting lighter. We kind of blend these things together. So you can bring it down and don't create just such an edge to things, all right? So there's that. Now, what are we gonna do? We're gonna gradually get a little bit warmer. Now we're gonna throw in this lesson and a little bit lighter in value. So let's see, we had this one. How would we make this warmer and lighter in value, okay? So here we are with the blue, okay? It's it's similar, it's, kind of, it's, it's leaning a little bit this way. But how would we make it warmer? We're gonna go which way? Well, this is getting further away from yellow, okay? You're going, at, you're getting further away. This way would be getting closer to the yellow. So we're gonna go just a little, and we don't have to go, these are not all the, 
colors. There's, there's variances between here. So as long as you're adding a little bit more yellow to this and lightening it up a bit. So what we can do, you see this blue green, that would be adding um, blue to it. This would be adding white to it. Okay. You see, that's a little lighter in value and a little warmer in color temperature. So let's take a look at something a little bit more like that. Let's see, do I have anything down here? This is, this is probably to the extreme, but it is warm and it's a little too dark. I've got to find something a little lighter. I could put it down and see it was almost the same value as that other one. Now this is pretty light, but you see how uh, it's not so much, Every, you know, color and value is relative. Over there, I had it on a black tray and it looks super light. As soon as I put it up to this white paper, it looks darker. Okay, you see how that's warmer and see how it's almost the same value, but maybe just a tad lighter. I'm just gonna scumble that in a bit. You can sneak it in behind your tree in some places, usually in sky holes. That was a no-no. You want them to be a little tad darker in value um, in those little holes because it's being filtered. It's like a, a screen on a porch. All right, so this paper doesn't do well with layering anyway, so we won't mess with that too much. All right, now down at the horizon line, it's going to get, I'm gonna blend this a little more. I'm just gonna let that get in. See, this uh, sky hole would be better with this um, value than it would with the lighter value. Now, down at the horizon line, I could leave it as is. You see, it's definitely light right there, okay? And you see how we went warm to cool in general. But let me see if I can find something a little bit lighter in value. Now, this is probably more of a cool light value, but as long as you get a light value, I'm just gonna add some of that in there just to break up that line a little bit. You could even get even warmer down here with a little bit leaning more towards yellow. Now this is a little bit of a yellowy white. It's pretty light in value. I may be losing some of my layering ability here, but because the this is so weighted on this side with this tree that uh, compositionally, I know this isn't a lesson on composition, it might be nice to have some sort of interest over here with the sky, something kind of cool going on. All right, so you see how that little bit of warmth down at the horizon line um, really push that back. You feel like the sun's back there. And it's just a simple, simple rule of nature that when you learn it in art, it's not that hard. You know, it's really pretty easy. So to add a little bit of division between, it's almost like I have three planes going on here. One's, one's um, like a hill that's a little closer with some trees. We got the really far away mountains. And then we have another range right here that I'm just gonna add a little warmth to with this purple. And uh, it gives a little bit of division. And again, we can, um, we can kind of uh, blend some things together so there's not such a stark line. And I'm losing my layering ability, but that's okay. All right, so that's a general idea of how things work. And without getting too complicated, you know, of course, we could throw in, you know, clouds and things. I don't have hardly any layering ability left anymore. And um, we could also throw in another little rule of color temperature is that in the shadows, what happens when you're hot out in the sun and you get in the shade of a tree? Do you get warmer or cooler? You get cooler. So that's the same thing that happens in the shadows of a tree. So let me kind of cool off this color temperature under here. I've got a nice Terry Ludwig purple here, and I'll just add a little bit of cool off these shadows. You can do it even within the tree a little bit in some areas. So that's another thing. If you had some, this, I kind of did it like a hill rolling forward. And even though this is closer, you go warm, warm, warm. Think of the rules. If there's a, a hill, there's probably a little bit of a shadow, so you can kind of cool that off a little bit. All right, so that is just a general idea of how value and color behave in our world. All right, I'm gonna do one more example here. I had to do it a little smaller because I'm running out of room, but I'm calling this one, once you know the rules, you can break them. And that's because you're using the same concepts and this is the trick that's going to allow you to create things that aren't 
uh, exactly what's in your reference image. Get a little bit creative yourself because the sky doesn't always have to be blue and the grass doesn't always have to be green. So let's use that concept and get a little fun with color with this one. Before I do this last quick little painting, I wanted to go over some of the concepts about what I have shared about color temperature in some actual paintings that I have created. You may have noticed that I've used the word typically a lot while describing color temperature. I want you to keep in mind that this is a gauge or a guide and often we have to consider the reference photo or the mood that we're trying to create. For example, this was a field of yellow flowers but I can change both the color and the mood by using the principles of value and color temperature. And here I've superimposed my graphic for determining color temperature kind of at the horizon line in this image. But I'd like you to take note of a couple of things that may seem to go against what I've just taught. Look at the sky, for example. Do you see those pink clouds kind of floating at the top? And you may be thinking, well, wait a minute, Susan. You said things go cooler at the top of the heavens down to warmer at the horizon line. But this pink is a warmer color. And this is a perfect example of the point I make with consider your reference image. Often, higher clouds in the scene will reflect the warmer tones from the sun beneath. Also, in this painting, notice the background field. You could be thinking, Susan, I thought you said things cool off in the distance. And even though this appears to be a blanket of pink flowers in the distance, they are actually cooler than some of the foreground pink temperatures that I used. And this is an example of what I've been repeating throughout this video, which is consider the elements in your painting and use these principles as a guide. Now, I'd like to mention that value is king. Notice this photo when I convert it to black and white. You can see that the values work. So while you may get some variances and purposely choose to change things with color temperature, value is almost always set to these rules and principles. Here's another painting converted to black and white. Notice the three sailboats. They are gradually getting lighter in value as they recede into the distance. Notice the foreground of the water is darker on the right side and it gradually gets lighter as it recedes into the distance. Now we do have some lighter values in the foreground here, but that's because it's the reflection of the sun. Once again, like I said, white flowers, consider the elements even when using the principles of value. And one reason I love creating value studies is because it can serve as a guide to multiple different color palette creations. And here is a small study that may, at first glance, seem to go against the color temperature principles. Look at the sky. The entire sky is a warm color temperature. However, you might notice that the upper heavens are indeed a bit darker in value and cooler in color temperature than the golden colors more at the horizon. In this painting, notice those far distant trees. They're so small in the background, but they're glowing. They're almost an orange red color. Again, seeming to go against the color principles of things getting cooler in the distance. But in this case, the sun immediately above is being reflected to the trees below. So by using these principles as a guide, we can also use logic and common sense as to how things are behaving in nature. In this night scene, the same principles of value are at work and color temperature. Notice the cooler color temperatures in the upper sky that get warmer towards the horizon. And what about this painting that seems to go totally against the principles of color temperature? Look at the foreground. It's primarily cool and the background hill is quite warm. This is another example of how we need to consider what's happening in the scene. We have a shadow being cast obviously in the foreground and there is a glow from the moon or the sky reflecting onto the background hill. And even though color temperature may seem a bit backwards in this image, the principles of value are still quite accurate. 
I really hope this lesson has helped some artists, beginner artists, maybe even intermediate artists, who haven't quite broken down these principles in this way. And if you haven't seen part one to this video on the principles of value, I highly recommend it because it is that important. I highly encourage you to do a lot of little studies. I mean, this little painting that I'm doing here is just on newsprint paper. But I feel our skills as artists improve so much better when we are practicing these principles rather than always trying to create such a serious painting. This lesson was fairly long, so I hope you hung in there to the end. I hope you will use these principles to help you once again find those clickable graphics that I've provided in the About section of this video. And as always, happy and blessed painting.